everyone, I'm Matt. Hi, I'm Desiree. And we're bringing you this week's Rising Tide West Coast Swing Guide. Welcome back to our spin series on the Rising Tide West Coast Swing Guide. Last week we talked about basics for our followers with the inside turn, and now we're going to talk about lead follow for the basic followers outside turn. We'll model this with a right side pass with a double outside turn for the follower. One, two, three, and four. Five and six. Show me from this side. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Breaking this down for our leaders. The prep for an outside turn actually happens right away on count one. One. You'll notice my body's kind of moving to the side a little bit, which rotates my hand a little bit inwards of the partnership. That's setting the follower up to turn outside. From here, count two. As the spin starts, I lift my hand and I make sure I have this nice high five position with my fingers pointed to the outside of the partnership. From here, the actual spin itself functions very similar to the inside turn. I'm drawing circles around the follower's shoulders with my fingers pointed down. This time, I'm drawing the circles in a clockwise direction and I'm drawing the circles twice. Three and four five and six. Now for our followers, a lot of the same things that held true for the inside turn last week are going to hold true for the outside turn. We're going to want to think about that under rotation on two that we talked about for the inside turn. For count one, backing up a little bit, we're going to want to think about that delayed right away transfer, right? So not just jumping onto that foot with all of our weight, but delaying that weight. We're going to want to think about hitting the walls as we turn. The only thing that really changes is on count four, since we're getting a double and not a single spin, we're going to be facing away from our leader instead of towards. So let me show you all of this in partnership. On count one, we've got that delayed right away transfer that's really gonna allow the leader to guide us through this prep that they're doing on one instead of two. On count two, think about turning the right side a bit away from leader that again will allow us to keep more of a connection in the hand. So as I take my right side into my own frame, we're going to feel a bit more, almost a tiny bit of compression in that hand. We're not pushing, but we're just able to stay connected and to have a nice, strong frame here that can be guided around in turns. For count three, you're gonna notice that I'm going to be facing a wall as opposed to facing my partner. The same will hold for three and. And I've got a little bit of a wider base than on the inside turn. I might have my feet really close together underneath my hips. For the outside turn, I'm not reaching again, but I might have a wider base because the outside turn is going to be going outside of the partnership. Hence, the actual rotation will be a little bit wider and I'll want to be on balance for that. So three, three and, another wall. And then for four, I'm turning facing away from my leader. This connection won't be truly in stretch, but it will be present. Then I'm going to walk it around to turn to face my leader for five and six. Showing that all the way through for leaders and follower, we're delaying, under rotating, wall, wall, away from leader, walking it around. That was your guide. Thank you everyone for tuning in. You can check us out online at mattdavisswing.com. We're also on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter as Rising Tide Swing Dance Studio. See you soon.